One of the most common questions we get here in the office is what causes my back pain? Back pain is the most common condition that we see here in our office and by some sources it's actually the number two reason people seek a doctor's help at all next to the common cold. So back pain is a very prevalent condition for human beings. You know, the, the lumbar spine and the spine in general is an incredibly complex machine that's exposed to a lot of abuse. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, flexible, but at the same time, very rigid when we pick up things and, and live our lives out. I find the spine to be uh, grossly misunderstood by a lot of different doctors. Let me explain. In order to have back pain, you have to have two factors present. Number one is excessive loading, and number two is sensitivity. So the spine can be loaded all the way up to the point where an overloading event creates sensitivity. And a healthy spine essentially can be loaded reasonably the most. So a young man, for example, who has not had any prior history of uh, back pain can probably lift and load their spine more than someone a little bit older who has, who has had a history of injuries and disc issues in their spine. And there are actually five factors that influence what I, what I consider to be a healthy spine. So number one is posture, number two is strength, number three is flexibility, number four is symmetry, and number five is youth or age. So a young spine tends to be, um, have less problems and an older spine tends to have or could have more problems. Also in that category, in other words, things we can't control are history and genetics. Those, are, um, those influence how much we can lift with our spine as well. So if a healthy spine can be reasonably loaded, then if you overload it, either acutely or chronically, you can get into trouble and you can sensitize tissues. If you have back pain of some type, and even neck pain, which I'll talk about in another video, but if you have back pain of any type, you have some tissue that is sensitized, therefore excessively loaded. And when we start to treat these problems, they're not treated very well, uh, it doesn't seem, because so many people, at least the ones that I see here in the clinic, have such a history of going from doctor to doctor to doctor, uh, it can be anywhere from your traditional uh, family doctor to pain management specialist to surgeons. A lot of people will go to a surgeon. They don't necessarily want surgery, but they want to go and see what they have to say. And it turns out that if the surgeon doesn't think they need surgery, then we have physical therapy to kind of revert to, which does address some of the components of what a healthy spine, what, what's needed for a healthy spine, uh, mo mostly strength. They do address posture. Uh, flexibility and symmetry, but not necessarily the unloading of the facet joints. Those facet joints, which are basically where the spine fits together, turns out if those joints are very tight, they're more loaded, and if they're operating better, they're more unloaded. And that can happen asymmetrically. So anything that we do here in the clinic to help our patients is an effort to unload the spine. And there are different structures of the spine that need to be unloaded. And it turns out there's different ways to unload those particular structures. So let me explain the structures that can uh, hurt in the back and where it gets really complicated and probably best illustrated by particular case studies that uh, we'll be doing as well are the combination of different structures that all contribute to a person's pain. So let's talk about these structures real quick. First of all, the facet joint. The facet joint is the joint that connects the spine together. It allows for motion primarily, kind of connects things together and helps stabilize the, the spine, but they can get asymmetrically stiff and tight. And probably the factors that influence that are the capsule that surrounds that, that facet joint, as well as the soft tissue that supports that facet joint. So we know that the soft tissue on one side of the spine can get tighter than on the other side. And there's all kinds of factors for this, anywhere from uh, sleeping. Uh, if you sleep on one side and a mattress is not particularly supportive, and then as you sag into the mattress, you basically shorten one side of the spine, lengthen the other side of the spine, and these, this creates the opportunity for asymmetry. And then if you add that to all the other activities you do in life that might have some asymmetries as well, things begin to kind of tighten up a little bit. 
when you add that with some genetic factors, some people are just a little bit more prone to this than others, it seems, you create sensitivity in the spine at the facet joints. That can be one facet joint or multiple facet joints, and that's where it gets very complicated as well because you have to unload all of them in order to get relief of pain. And many times doctors are trying to identify the one structure that's causing pain. We look at MRIs and we see disc herniations and we see annular tears and disc bulges and, and things of that nature. But sometimes a person's pain profile is multifaceted. There's, there's multiple structures that are actually causing the pain and not all of those structures on MRI are obvious that they're hurting. So when we start to treat people successfully, we basically unload the spine. So everything that loads the spine more, patients instinctively know probably is not helping them. And an example of that would be if you trigger your back doing almost anything, it could be lifting something as little as a pencil, lifting a grandchild, uh, helping someone move. I had a lady recently lift the corner of a couch uh, to try to put it up on some blocks to do something underneath there. And most people have a loading event in their history that created the sensitivity that actually brought them in. And when their spine is sensitive, when it's been triggered, they instinctively know to try to unload it, you know, rest. They, they ask me about heat, they ask about ice, they ask about uh, hanging upside down, they ask about what's the best way to sleep, should I put my knees up? And the bottom line is if you filter everything through this loading versus unloading model, anything that loads the spine more creates more pain, anything that unloads the spine and feels better creates less pain, that is the answer to the question. So if heat feels better and relaxes the muscles and the muscles that run up and down the spine, if they aren't compressing the spine as much and it makes you feel better, that's the right answer. Now it turns out that manual therapies, uh, certain manual therapies, that can more aggressively unload and, and restore flexibility at the facet joints have a longer lasting effect on unloading those tissues and allowing them to desensitize. And that's what happens to a lot of people as well. So when you trigger the spine because you overloaded it, and that overloading can be acute, it can be chronic, or it can be an acute episode in the presence of chronic loading. So those are all kind of situations that we see. The acute person is more of the young person who um, overloads their spine, like young males are notorious for this. They overload their spine either in squats or deadlifts. Uh, it's a very common thing that we see. And then you have older people who are just, you know, for whatever reason, they've sat for a long time in their career, or maybe they've uh, participated in activities such as repetitive bending, and that can create problems, or even operating heavy machinery or driving uh, big trucks that kind of load the spine and vibrate it over time. All of these things create loading that can build up over time, and if the sensitivity builds up with the mechanical loading, the person's gonna have back pain. So we have to mechanically unload those tissues, and we have various techniques for that, which I won't go over in this particular video, but if you do not unload those tissues, you are not going to get lasting relief. And that's really the, the answer to the question of what causes back pain. Well, the, the answer to that is pretty complicated as it turns out, but if you look at it through the lens of loading creates the sensitivity. If you have sensitivity, you have to unload the spine. And if you understand the tissues that are involved, such as the facet, which we talked about, the disc between the vertebrae are another tissue that can be overloaded and create sensitivity. You can have a loading of the actual nerve and you're gonna have a particular set of symptoms if you are loading up that nerve, literally pinching the nerve with various things. Uh, that's a complicated video in and of itself, which we could talk about later. And then the actual tissues themselves, the connective tissue, the muscles, the fascia, everything that surrounds the back, uh, when those tissues are tight, uh, they're actually loading in tension. And so when those tissues are in, are in tension, they're shortened, they don't allow the spine to work the way that it's supposed to. And these are all very subtle changes with regard to how your spine works. And so if you are experiencing back pain of some sort, especially if that back pain is relatively chronic and it's kind of waving between kind of okay, not so okay, okay, not so okay, you'll notice that additional loading is probably triggering some pain 
And when you find a way to unload it in some way, either by stretching, doing some exercises, uh, anything like that will potentially unload the spine and help to desensitize it. You just don't build very much performance margin. So performance margin is a fancy way to explain the idea that we have some buffer between our ability to load the spine without triggering it. And the problem with triggering it is the idea that you don't realize that you're approaching that limit or that line. It happens all at one time very often. And it's a little bit like tripping a breaker at the house. If you trip a breaker at the house, you don't often realize that you were already overloading that circuit or you wouldn't have turned the hair dryer on with the toaster oven and the microwave all at the same time. And often when we do trip the breaker at our house, we realize that um, we had it all overloaded in the first place. So it's a safety mechanism and our bodies have safety mechanisms as well to keep you from damaging your back more. In fact, that's probably a blessing that uh, your back will tell you if you've overloaded something down there. So the bottom line is, you know, what causes back pain uh, is a relatively simple question and a complex question at the same time. And the complexity of that question is, it, it involves the idea that there can be several structures that are sensitive and overloaded. And, and to further complicate that matter, there are several ways we can unload those tissues. And I'll talk about that in a different video, different ways that we unload. And I think it's important for you to realize that because if you filter your story through this loading versus unloading framework, if you can first determine what is loading the spine, what is loading your spine or what caused that initial loading that will help you understand that your spine is loaded if it's sensitive. Then, when I talk about the different structures, you know, we have the facet, the disc, the nerve, and the fascia. Those are the four structures that can cause pain. The question is, what of those structures are loaded and tight, and what has been done for you to unload those or to help kind of relieve that? Because if you can accomplish that, then you will have more performance margin, more of an ability to operate within life without triggering your back. Now, I will say this, a healthy spine can be reasonably loaded, uh, but a younger spine that has not been injured before is gonna have a higher performance capacity than a, an older spine who has had some problems. And so we have to be able to not have a too high expectation of how much we can load our spines given all of the factors that are at play. And age is one of those factors, genetics is another one of those factors, and history is another one of those factors. Those are the ones we can't control. But we can improve our strength, we can improve our posture, we can improve the flexibility of the spine and the symmetry of the spine, because literally symmetry is when we're loading one side more than the other. If a person has pelvic distortion, that's where the pelvis is a little crooked, we can literally see that. When a person has pelvic distortion, they're loading one side of the spine more than the other. It's very important to, to realize that. So, I hope that helps. Uh, I like to, I explain the same thing to patients uh, here in the office on a regular basis. I make this video to help further explain this to our patients and anyone else who can benefit from it. But yes, filter everything through the lens of loading versus unloading and of the different structures in the back that can hurt what has been done for yours to help unload those tissues. And if you want to learn more about that, then I'll link a video uh, here on the screen so that you can watch what is done for each one of the tissues to ma maximally unload that. And I'll talk more about that. Thank you.